Good morning. I hope you're having a happy day. This is Lou Benninger, and I'm here with the Wikiman Santos Vigil, and we're here on Saturday, the 27th of January. But we're kind of faking you out today because we're pre recording this because we couldn't both be here tomorrow, which is tonight. We're talking Friday night, but you're hearing this on Saturday. So the only reason it makes any difference to you, I think, is because if you want to call in, we are not going to be here. You can leave a message for the big kahuna and you can vote for me or vote against me either way. And uh, that will will get through to him. But in terms of chatting on the air or giving us a message or if I drop the ball somehow or fall asleep on the air, you won't be able to arouse us. So uh, welcome. We're glad you're listening to us. Uh, if this is your first time. This is called The Patriot. It's KMYC Radio. We're broadcasting in Northern California, part of the United States of America. This is what we call the state of Jefferson, the northern part of California. And we're here in Yuba County, in the eastern side of Yuba County, on Mount Hooth. And we're up here in a bunker. We used to be a part of the Obama resistance, which we thought would be over when Obama left office. But he really, all he did is relocate down the street. And, um, even though he didn't want to build a wall on the border, he built a wall around a big house down the street and he's operating an underground op, uh, overthrow coup operation to fight, uh, president Trump and the Trump movement. So we're here still as a part of the, we're part of the Trump movement, but we're a part of the, uh, Obama resistance as well. So we're here for three hours today. And that means for you out there in, uh, that graduated in, in uh, Lindhurst, that's a three hours. That would be till noon if you on the new math. And uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of things today. But if you are having a hard time listening to us because of poor reception, you could go on the website at KMYC. That's KMYCradio.com, KMYCradio.com. And then click on the listen live uh, spot there, the icon, and you can uh, you can hear clearer there. If for some reason the <clears throat> the uh, stream isn't working tomorrow, you could also go uh, later tomorrow uh, and go to YouTube. Just get on YouTube and then type in One Eye Blind Media. Four separate words with a space in between. One Eye Blind Media. That's Chris Starkey's radio channel or YouTube channel. And then find Lou, Lou live list and click on the, uh, whatever show you want to listen. You can listen anytime you want in perfect, uninter uninterrupted, no static, no fussing around. You listen to it really well. A lot of people like to do that. So there you have it. Uh, one eye blind media, or you could go to KMYC radio.com. So this is 1410 AM. If I forgot to say that, I think somebody told me one time I should say that every once in a while. I usually say it once a day <clears throat> that I'm here. We're here every Saturday. If you're new to this every Saturday, we're here from nine to noon. So last week we were, you probably got, we threw you on a, a little twist there. We had Chris Ann Hall, who is an expert on the constitution. And, uh, we, we love Chris Ann and her work. So she was going to take over the show. Uh, through Skype, and then she had an uh, unfortunate, unexpected death in the family. So we had a couple of my friends just sit in at the last minute, Dave Hobbs and Phil Enright. 
So if you didn't like that or that threw you for a loop, uh, hopefully just settle down. If you're a marijuana smoker, just smoke one. That'll help you just settle down a little bit and we'll get on with life. Okay. So I just wanted to mention to you, I've been <clears throat> uh, traveling a little bit the last nine days. So I've been thinking a lot of this shithole stuff and a lot of this talk about that. And I thought, you know, these sissy uh, liberals, they'll make an issue. <clears throat> they'll just concoct an issue. Like nobody even heard that comment except one guy that was in the meeting and he came out, he leaked it, then came out, confirmed it. And then, uh, and spread the word and the entire nation of liberals was upset by it. But I wondered why, and I'm wondering if you're so, uh, upset by that. I'm wondering if you're upset by people running around by the thousands with vagina hats on, does that bother you? Or I'm wondering if you're offended by men, uh, claiming they're women and going into women's bathrooms. I'm also wondering whether you're offended by people that disrespect the flag of the, of our country, or are you offended by illegal aliens, uh, breaking into this country and taking our tax dollars, getting the benefits that you work hard for. And maybe you've served in the military or your kids are serving in the military. Maybe someone you love died in the military and we have illegal aliens breaking into this country. Uh, getting the benefits that those people fought and died for. I'm wondering if you're offended by how corrupt our politicians are. I just came from Vietnam. I was sitting on the corner and having a cup of coffee. They have all these little coffee carts or different carts. You can get a sandwich. A lot of these vendors on the streets over there. And my favorite lady that I like to drink her coffee and support her. So this cop comes up, communist cop, and he sits down. And I'm sitting right across from him and he puts his hand out and she pays him off right in front of me. And I just was sitting there, had my sunglasses on ball cap on. It was warm. And I just started staring at him. He got really uncomfortable because he didn't know who I was. Uh, but he was a cop, uh, and he goes around and he extorts money from these little vendors. And I used to think, you know, thank God I live in America where people don't do that, but they actually do do that. And there's corruption in government and our mayor, Ricky Scamayoa has taken two $5,000 payments for, uh, for dispensaries, marijuana dispensaries to be got here. I've got a report that one supervisor got a car. I got given a car and some money, uh, for him to support marijuana in the County. So, uh, corruption goes on here as well. And those are just a couple of local examples, but, uh, it happens. So I'm wondering if you're offended by a comment, uh, by a shithole nation. In fact, uh, I've been to a lot of these shithole nations and, uh, I don't know, you know, if, if you're concerned about Mexicans or Af Afghanis or Somalians coming in here and where it's okay in their country to rape little girls or molest boys, you think that isn't shithole. Uh, I, I don't know where you're coming from. Or if you want to, you know, I've never been accosted so much. I've been all over the world. Uh, Uganda, India, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand. Uh, and I have never had the harassment and being held at gunpoint and be hit up by federales as in Mexico. That's a shithole country. Uh, you may love the culture, love the people. I do. I like it in Mexico, but I'm telling you, they got some screwy folks down there. That's why it's interesting to me because they, Oh yeah. How come you're saying that about those countries? Listen, we're not rushing down to move there. Think about it. They're busting down the doors to get in here from those countries. So maybe you're, maybe you're not so offended at how corrupt our politicians are, or maybe, uh, how screwy and perverted Hollywood is. Maybe that, maybe that's not bugging you very much. I wonder if you're offended by racist groups like black lives matter and the Democrats started Ku Klux Klan, uh, or 
maybe universities that are run by communists and telling your kids that everything you've been teaching them is a bunch of crap. Or maybe you're a, maybe you should think about being offended by Hillary and Bill Clinton who've been molesting and cheating and lying and corrupting our government and selling off our government for years. There's a lot of things to be offended about, but people got offended by a term that we can't even, that actually more people there, I think there's four or five people in that meeting said they never heard Trump say anything, but it's a big, big old deal to you. So just something to think about. I think all these things, a lot of this stuff is just contrived because everybody uses the same type of words, uh, to describe this problem. Now we got some real crazy, you know, this, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, <clears throat> she's a, uh, Congresswoman out of Texas. And did you hear she got on an airplane and, uh, the gal that's a, actually a Democrat Latino was getting on the same plane and she had a, uh, business class seat. And they said, no, you're not, you don't have a, you don't have a reservation. She said, that's impossible. I, I made a reservation. She was on a return from like Honduras or something. And she had her hookups. She, she had business class. And so finally, when they put her back in the cheap seats, she saw that Shirley Jackson Lee had her spot. And, uh, so basically the airline, I can't remember whether it was American or Delta, bump this lady who had purchased a first class or a business seat. And so what, what, it, and here, this gal's a Mexican gal, Latino, maybe she's Honduran. She's a teacher. And so when the gal complained, Shirley Jackson Lee called her a racist, right? So this, this, uh, what's waters first name. Do you remember? Huh? I can't. That's all right. It's all right. I can't. Oh, Jesse Waters, the Fox guy? No, Waters from down here in Southern California. This is a nutcase, the female down there, Congresswoman. Oh, Maxine. Maxine Waters, thank you. So Maxine Waters and Sheila Jackson Lee are, are slightly brain dead. They're both black. And they match up with that guy Johnson who thought, remember Johnson, who on that subcommittee with, I don't know whether he was on there with uh, Trey Gowdy. But anyway, they got in a discussion with a military guy about deploying more troops to Guam, Guam and he thought if they put 4,000 more, more troops, it might tip the island over. Did you, did you see that? It, those people got syphilis or something. Their brain has, like, been, been damaged. Anyway, this is a tweet from Sheila Jackson Lee. This gal is not a rookie. This gal's been around Congress for years like Maxine Waters. They can't find their geography with both hands. So uh, she said, as if Trump's tax cuts aren't bad enough, he seems determined to get us into a war with North Japan. <laughs> Come on, you can't make this stuff up. She said, I wouldn't put it past him to try to bomb Tokyo the way Nixon bombed the Germans at Pearl Harbor. I thought, you know something, these people... I'll take a heroin addict any day over these people. She says, finally, if you know your history, that's how the Spanish American way started. W a Y. This is her actual tweet. Let me say it again. As if Trump's tax cuts aren't bad enough, he seems determined to get us into war with North Japan. You know, uh, Maxine waters cannot keep North Korea and all these other, you know, it's like, they're all racist. It's like, you've seen one Asian. You've seen them all, you know, they're all blend together. That's what I tell them over there. Over there, I, I tell them all us white guys look the same when they say, <laughs> go to, when I go to Vietnam, it's hilarious. You can't make this. How about this? This is an email. All you people that, that are concerned about shithole, let me just do this for you. This is a Hillary Clinton email to Donna Brazil. Remember Donna Brazil who just wrote that tell-all book? She took over the Democrat uh the Democrat party, uh, right in the middle of the campaign. She's, this is what Clinton wrote to her. 
on October 17th, 2016. She says, if that effing B wins, talking about Trump, we all hang from nooses. Lauer's finished. That's Matt Lauer. And if I lose, it's all on your heads for screwing this up. You better fix this S H I T. That's the, uh, you guys, I know you're really concerned about shithole comments, but this, I don't know whether you've ever heard about all the comments that, that, uh, secret service people have now divulged that would Hillary Clinton, when they would see her every day and they'd, she'd tell them they were effing pigs and stuff like that. So, and, and let me just do this and then we'll get on to some other stuff. Did you see Cory Booker go after this blonde, uh, Kirsten, uh, sorry, Kristen Nielsen, Kristen Nielsen, I believe is a holdover from the Obama, uh, uh, administration. And she, she was in Homeland security. They promoted her to be the head of Homeland security. And they interviewed her after this shithole comment that she said wasn't even said in the meeting and Cory Booker, who's the, used to be the mayor of New Jersey. Now he is a Senator, one of the senators from New Jersey and he and Kamala Harris and all a bunch of those blacks just got all flared up. Oh, you got to go on YouTube and dig it out. Cory Booker is his name. And I'm telling you, he just, he just berated this woman. He didn't ask her any questions. He just verbally attacked her. And I want to want you to think about this. If a white guy would have berated a black woman like he did to, to Kristen Nielsen, I'm telling you, uh, the whole world would have had a big fit, but anybody can do whatever they want to a white person, particularly if you're black. So, um, we got just a few minutes uh, left here. I, I saw a guy on Facebook that I know in town here that's full of baloney. He used to be a sheriff's deputy for Sutter County, and he's too liberal for me. But uh, he said he's sick of he's sick of people kept talking about the the stock market going up, 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 and 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 he was saying how it was going up under Obama, right? And um, it it had gone up under Obama, but the fact is. Uh, it never made it up to 20, 20,000 over 20,000. Right. So let me just make a quick comparison for y'all. Uh, let me tell you, describe Obama's economy, the lowest labor participation rate since the 1970s, almost 95 million Americans were out of the labor force, worst recovery since the 1940s, lowest home ownership rate in 51 years. Almost 13 million more Americans were added to the food stamp uh, roster and over 43 Amer million Americans living in poverty. Trump's economy, unemployment at 17 year low, 1.7 million jobs created. This is that Ob Obama had eight years. Obama, uh, Trump had 365 days, 1.7 million jobs created. African-American unemployment at a 17 year low fact. It's the lowest it's ever been since the history of keeping track. Uh, I think that's over 40 years food stamps use at seven, seven year low home values up 6% Dow at never seen before records after all the Democrats pre predicted a complete crash of Trump one and a 401k plans. Of course, if the stock market's going up 401k plans, are, uh, are spiking. And one fi final comment before we break for the first half hour, just saying weird. This Sean Davis says weird how clumps of cells magically become intact livers and hearts. Once it's time for Planned Parenthood to harvest that baby for cash. Isn't that amazing? Let me just say that again. Weird how cl just clumps of cells, which they claim babies are magically become intact livers and hearts once it's time for Planned Parenthood to sell their body parts. Well, okay, we're going to take a break. Will we be time for take a break? We're going to take a break. Come right back. We're going to be here for two and a half more hours. Don't go anywhere else.
bringing new meaning to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-93. All right. Well, you're listening to Live with Lou. We're back. I got seven things here more trusted or more trustworthy than CNN. The first one is breast melt from Bruce Jenner. Number two is unprotected sex from Madonna. Three is having a drink with Bill Cosby. Four is Casey Anthony's babysitting service. Five is getting text message from Anthony Weiner. Uh, six is mainstream media polls. Again, we're talking about seven things more trusted than CNN. Seven is Flint, Michigan tap water. And I threw in another one. Teddy Kennedy is a lifeguard. So I noticed uh, when I got back into town and I noticed I, I was looking at uh, the Internet while I was gone that uh, we're continuing to have character downfalls among people and key positions in our community. And um, so I noticed that the news reported that a teacher had been uh, put on administrative leave uh, from Yuba City High School. And it's an ongoing uh, source of irritation for me when uh, whenever it comes to teachers or government employees and they get into some sort of scrape, you can't talk about their name. Now, on the way home today, if I get pulled over and they think they have a warrant for my arrest, which happens sometimes, there's there's mistakes made or they think I'm driving under the influence. They will cite me or take and publish that or the newspaper will publish it. They'll cite me and release, or they will take me down and incarcerate me, lock me up and file charges. Right. And regardless of the innocent and guilty is not even an issue yet. If I get picked up, are charged. There's an investigation started to prove it, right? And then you have a court case and you have a chance to defend yourself and the district attorney has to prove something against you, right? Or you have to they have to solve the minds of twelve jurors. If I if they drop the charges or if they uh, find me innocent, my name has been published in the paper that there was concern about me and I got picked up, right? That's how it works. Now it's fascinating to me and I think it's terrible and I think it should be changed where the teachers union has the kind of power that when an employee of the school, like a teacher is put on suspension for something behavior that they don't have to tell you who it is. Now, if they were, working for the city of Yuba city and cleaning up our sewage to put it back into feather river. That's one thing. But when they have 2000 kids under their care, it's fascinating to me. What I always remind people of, cause I was on the school board at Yuba County for a while. When you see the term <clears throat> teachers union, there's nowhere in that title that includes children. 
In fact, if I've seen YouTube videos of top executives for the teachers union, including their top attorneys, actually say their job is to represent, protect, and get the best deal they can and, and uh, assist teachers. That's their role. And every time I notice a teacher getting in trouble, I wonder, we're mandated as parents to send our kids to school. It's by law. You cannot withhold your kids from school. <clears throat> and if the government could get away with it, they would, they would force you to send all your kids to the government schools. But let's just say the fact is you're mandated to put your kids in school. And then the, there is no one really there to protect your kids. Now, if you think, oh, they have a school resource officer or they have one cop for 40, 40 or 50 acres of property and they may or may not be packing a gun and that person is going to somehow protect my 1,000 or 2,000 kids on that campus, that's nonsense. I want to ask you, who do you think is supposed to be protecting the well-being of your children? My answer to you is nobody's over there protecting your kids. They all say they are. And they're getting paid. They're getting overpaid as administrators to, quote, unquote, protect your kids. But the bottom line is, and, and I get sick of all this stuff. Well, well, are you a mandated reporter? Like when I go into the Yuba County Jail, when I, when I introduce a new teacher at the Yuba County Jail or, or a presenter of information, they have to go through like a PREA a PREA briefing. PREA is an acronym that is basically informing you that this is a, is a safe zone that anybody that suggests that they've been molested or had sex with or pressured or harassed, uh, you have to report that if you're in the jail. And there's posters all over the Yuba County Jail, and I'm sure Sutter County as well, protecting prisoners against other prisoners and protecting prisoners against correctional officers from any kind of suggestions, right? There is more protection of our prisoners than there is of our kids. You know, I get all this. So we have to go through this thing of, we have to agree that we're going to be, we're going to pass along any nefarious information we get to the authorities. That's how Aaron Easton, the former police chief of Marysville got himself in trouble because of a gal that uh, is claiming that he uh, forced her to have sex with him while a student at Yuba College. She was made a comment to a correctional officer in Sacramento, and that person was mandated to report it and then report it to Yuba County, and that's how that call got started. So I'm here. We are. Well, you got your kids. You got your kids that are mandated to be over there, y Yuba City Unified School District, for eight hours a day, six to eight hours, let's say. Who is protecting their interest? Because I have a friend whose wife claims that Jim Whitaker uh, molested her in 1998. It was reported and nothing was done about it. So he went in to get a report and they can't find any report on it. Isn't that amazing? Nothing was done about it. She wanted to go on to college. And it was so, you know, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a 15, 16, 17-year-old, 14-year-old girl who basically have no power, surrounded by older, really old people, look like they're about ready to die. They're probably only 35 or 40, but they look like they're ready to die to them, have all kinds of power over them, can get them suspended expelled detention if they still have that get them arrested all kinds of power total power and authority over these people and yet you expect them to uh make a report of somebody was molesting me or fussing around with me that takes a pretty bold person in this case this one girl many years ago made a negative comment about Jim Whitaker to a nurse and the nurse said, what are you talking about? And she explained to the nurse what happened and the nurse reported to the authorities. Nothing was done about it. 
So how many times does that have to happen before you feel like, hey, there's no reason reporting things. Nothing's going to happen. You, As adults in our community, you feel the same way. You keep reporting a drug house over and over and over. I've had people tell me, Lou, I've reported that drug house. I've reported this person. I've reported that to net five to this person. And they lose heart because they think nobody will, nobody's doing anything, right? Be- maybe because the investigation isn't proceeding fast enough. Or, or a, a criminal, you know, you've heard the term, criminals have all the rights, right? You're a victim. You get, your kid gets raped. Your kid gets shot. Your kid gets run over, beat up. And the court, the guy starts going to court and they keep continuing it, continuing it, continuing it, continuing it. The thing strings out for a year or two years. Do you ever get any justice? No, not really. Not, not when the guy is on bailed out and, and free for years before they ever settle it. So, so here you have kids that are at the school, the teachers are protected 150% by the union so much so that they could be a pedophile and they will be put on administrative leave and the parents don't even get to know who the, the, they aren't even informed who got went on leave. It's anonymous. That is ridiculous. In fact, that's an offense to the families who are putting the most precious thing in their lives. It's not their car. It's not their real estate. It's not the money they have. It's their children are the most precious thing in their lives. And they're lending them to the school and, and, and their school is so, uh, anal about everything that you send the wrong person over to pick the kid up. They, they won't let release the kid to him unless, you know, I mean, there's all those kind of rules. And so, but all the rights, all the protections are for the teacher. Well, they're innocent until proven guilty. No other place in our society do people get off like that unless it's government employees. If I get pulled over leaving this radio station for something, my name is going to go in the paper whether I'm guilty or not. It's going to be published. And yet these unions get away with this uh, keeping people's names private. I think it's totally wrong, and it scares the hell out of the parents. I've had parents call me, contact me, that I'm still I'm trying to get back. I've just been down, back from Vietnam for a few hours. Parents call me saying, Lou, what do you know? We're freaked out. We got kids over in that school and this and that and this and that. And then we got people like the PE department of Yuba city that now have come out in support of Jim Whitaker. I thought, Oh, this is totally amazing. They, they have no idea what's going on and they're like standing behind him a hundred percent. Well, well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating to me like, Oh, we're not going to say anything publicly about this. They sent a letter home supposedly finally to the uh, student's parents, but not naming the, why did they do that? Don't you think the students would notice that teacher being gone? Don't you think the students would explain uh, the scuttlebutt around around the campus? Don't you think we'll get that communicated? I I was sent an article uh, about Piedmont High School. Piedmont is in California, <clears throat> down south. A Piedmont teacher, high school teacher, allegedly sexually harassed multiple students, including some he chaperoned on a trip to Europe. He it says he resigned. This is an older article. It's not. It isn't uh, a current thing. It happened. It already happened a while back. So anyway, this teacher was accused by numbers of females. Uh, of sexual harassment. He did not have sex with them. I want you to hold that thought. Uh, The guy named Mark Cowherd, he was never charged by the police. Uh, They put him on administrative leave originally, 
and then they br were bringing him back. The DA d was not decided not to file charges, but the parents got so furious, they went in and filled the uh, board chambers at Piedmont Unified School District. And they complained and said, we don't want this guy back around our kids. Now, the interesting thing is what he did and didn't do. This is what the story goes. This is how the story goes. He was put on administrative leave at the start of the school year while the district investigated complaints of inappropriate behavior towards students, including four recent female graduates who had gone on a school trip with him to Europe. The incidents included asking about the girl's sexual activity. Inappropriate, right? Out of bounds. Didn't touch him. He just, he just talked to him about their sexual activity out of bounds. Then he invited them al alone to his room at night. Okay. Improper. Didn't touch him. Finally, he made comments about the fact that they were attractive. They about their physical attractiveness. Not like I get a kick out of this. Oh, you're really beautiful inside and out. I get so sick of that term inside and out. Just like, get over it. Just say you're, I like you. It's like beautiful inside. Who's look, what a stupid term. So he comments about their physical attractiveness. Maybe he said they had a big butt or big boobs. I don't know what he did. He didn't have sex with anybody. Nobody said he touched them. He said, uh, it's called sexual harassment. The district said we have rules against that. He violated the rules, but they weren't going to fire him for that. This is how powerful the union is. Now, let's think about this. These teachers are supposed to be held to a higher standard than the average duck. The same way that pastors, right? Cops, coaches, all should are, are we look at them in our society culturally is being held to a higher standard. They watch their mouth, right? They watch, they don't give any weird hugs. They don't, uh, meet with kids alone. They don't, uh, they don't make s weird suggestive comments. They don't do anything like that. They're supposed to set a good standard, have good behavior, uh, be polite, have decorum. And they're not supposed to be teenagers. They're supposed to be adults that behave themselves. And in Piedmont, they decided uh, that they're going to bring this guy back. And uh, the Piedmont police captain, Chris Monahan said the department had been in a back and forth conversation with the district attorney's office in Alameda, uh, over regarding, should they charge this guy or not? And the DA's office said, we're not going to prosecute this. Now, if you look up, if you do a Google search on disciplinary issues with schools, you'll notice there's times when schools can, a teacher has nothing to do with getting arrested. And then you'll see where teachers get arrested. Like we had a, a teacher at Yuba County Office of Education, a 20 something teacher, <clears throat> female that started having sex with a little gangbanger, made his life. He thought he was in hog heaven. So after he got done having sex with her and the rumors broke out around school, it got back to the administration. They called the police. They arrested her. They canned her. And then the little gangbanger parents who were always looking for a free handout sued, sued the uh, school district and got money. He got, he got sex with a, a older woman, 20 something year old woman. And plus he got cash out of the deal. He got, what would he hit the, he hit the sexual lottery. So in this situation, uh, the Piedmont decided they're going to bring the guy back and the, and the, the parents just said, we ain't going to have it. And so the fellow resigned and left. He was a history teacher. Now, so one of the um, parents said this, her name's Lisa Sherman. She said this, and I think she hit the nail right on the head. 
Lisa Sherman said about the whole thing after a hundred students and parents crowded the boardroom. Uh, she said, girls, if you don't do something about this, girls will in fact never speak up because they'll think nothing ever gets done. And that's exactly what happens. If you want a populace to dis disengage from the government, you just have the government operate by a different set of rules than the rest of the populace. And they, they will never tell you anything. People won't come forward for anything. It's amazing to me how many whistleblowers you say, we want whistleblowers. We want people to stand up for righteousness and turn in people, stealing stuff and ripping people off and doing stuff. What happened to the whistleblower on Benghazi? You remember that guy? He got canned. Do you remember the whistleblower on Carl Adams, sexual, sexual baloney going on in the district attorney's office, playing dungeons and dragons on the computers, the DAs? Uh, she got canned. There's a lot of, when whistleblowers stand up, it costs a lot. People say, oh, people, people need to get a backbone. Oh, really? If you've got kids in school, you're trying to, maybe they're going to college. You're paying a thousand, two thousand dollars a month for your kid to be in college. And you're going to risk your job by whistleblowing on a fellow employee or a boss or whatever. Uh, molesting you or cheating you and you're going to lose that job. Are you going to be able to make your house payment? There's a lot of costs here. So Lisa Sherman says who has a daughter, she was one of the girls that reported cowherds inappropriate behavior. The girls, she said, will in fact not speak up because they'll see nothing was ever done. And then she said, boils, this is interesting. I've never thought of it this way. Boy, boys will think, that this behavior is acceptable. In other words, you let teachers molest girls, grab girls, slap girls on the rear end, snap their bra, touch them in the breast, right? Touch their leg. And boys, if the, if the teacher can get away with that, boys think, oh, she's easy, right? So that's what happened in Piedmont. And the, it, the, to me, it has a couple messages that I think we need to take to the Yuba City Unified School District and the rest of the school districts. Districts don't protect kids. They just don't. They say, oh, yeah, we, we're, we're concerned about your kids. Districts, school districts, I've had, I, I've seen attitudes when I was on the school board that they thought they took better care of the kids than the parents do. It's, it's baloney. It's baloney. The most precious thing in people's lives is the kids they send to that school and to have kids be at risk for people that are flirting with them. Teachers that are flirting with them want to get a feel, a brush by on the breast. Uh, it's totally out of bounds and it's amazing to me when teach when when parents make a report that it doesn't end up on file anywhere and it can't be found. Isn't that interesting over at Yuba City under Bill Highland was when this particular report from my friend in nineteen ninety eight was made and uh it was reported to me many years ago, and it wasn't even reported to me to do anything. I wasn't even on the air writing articles. It was when Jim Whitaker was first running for office, and I used to put out a thing called, or I still do, put out a thing called Lou Picks for my friends because they always ask me to who to vote for, or some of them do, so it was easier for me to, to give them something and talk to them. And they said, hey, Lou, we don't know whether who you're going to pick for this 5th District Supervisor, but we want to let you know that this guy molested my wife, touched my wife in, inappropriately before when she was a single girl. And uh, so I thought, hey, that's a bummer. I'm sad to hear that. And I just went on with my life. They went on with their life. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about this. And uh, because Piedmont shows that since par if parent, those hundred 
parents and students hadn't gone into the school board and raised holy hell, Piedmont High School was going to bring that person back. After being inquisitive about girls' sexual activity, uh, about making comments about their uh, female attributes, and uh, asking them to stop in at his hotel room to have a chit-chat. That's a bad sign, folks. And uh, I, w I was watching, I forget where I was watching this, but the guy, the guy made the comment. He says, one thing about your children, he said, you can't ever blink because they can get in real precarious situations when you're raising kids. I, I think I agree with that. You cannot blink as a parent. And so I think Yuba City High has proven that they are not vigilant about protecting uh, protecting the security of these children. Number one, uh, they should have exposed who they were releasing. I don't care whether it's, you know, it's interesting to me. I, I was telling somebody yesterday that the whole thing with these children, there's no protection for children. It's only for the teachers. The children are just a meal ticket for these folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, this is Lou Benninger, and uh, I think we're starting our second hour here tonight. So uh, we're recording this on Friday night for Saturday morning. So if you want to call in and leave a message, you can, 742-5555 with the station. You won't be able to talk to Santos or I because we're going to be doing other stuff Saturday. But this is uh, a fresh show. It's not like a rerun or anything like that. So thank you for listening. Uh, I just want to mention a couple of the folks that uh, help us stay alive out here. That means money. One of them <clears throat> is a group called the Sutter Buttes <coughs> Tea Party Patriots. And um, they are one of these groups. I don't know. You remember when the Tea Party started? Pretty, co pretty cool group. Remember, they, they were just made fun of, mocked by the way all you shithole concerned pe people. Remember, they called them tea baggers, which was a referral to a man's scrotum. Remember that? Uh, and mocked them. They, no one thought that was such a hard deal, right? They, the Democrats didn't have any problem with calling them tea baggers, right? <clears throat> so uh, calling them genitals, right? Like calling them vaginas or something. Nobody had any problem with that. So anyway, the Tea Party actually was the group member that Lois Lerner uh, and her dogs at the IRS, uh, they went after like 400, over 400 conservative groups. In fact, the the Tea Party group that was a Yuba County Tea Party group was one of those that, that actually they did damage to and took $8,000 worth of their funds from them, ripped them off, totally scam these people, you talk about people in prison being bad people. Come on, man. We got people running the Clintons. You don't get any worse than the Clintons. We should let out manslaughter cases, everything. The Clintons, these people are so bad. Maxine Waters, she's a total thief. Anyway, the Tea Party, uh, Sutter Beach Tea Party operates in town here in the Yuba Sutter area, and they meet on the first and third Monday nights of each month at the Church of Glad Tidings, Building 200. The church, you lets them use a spot out there. That's at 1179 Eager Road or at the corner of Highway 99 and Eager Road, just north of Yuba City. And uh, so the next meeting coming up is February 5th, and that's at 630. You can open the doors open at 6. But they've got a good speaker. Last uh, speaker they had was James Gallagher. They're bringing in some good speakers, and the cool thing is that these people, uh, the Sutterby's Tea Party Patriots, are people that are actually putting some actions to their thoughts or concerns or complaints, and they're leaning on legislators to do the right thing. Small government, honor the Constitution, do your job, right? So an, another group like Sutter Tea Party 
Patriots is the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, which was started in the 1970s after Proposition 13, which reduced your <clears throat> property taxes. Howard Jarvis and Paul Gann put this organization together. So this coming February 5th, uh, a representative from Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, or HJTA.org, if you want to go check it out on the internet, very good website. They are for you. They are fighting for the taxpayer, and they're, one of their representatives, David Wolf, is going to be there. Uh, he's worked for 11 years and uh, is our legislative director. He knows what's going on in the Capitol. He argues uh, at the state Capitol for your, your sake, and uh, he's going to brief the folks there that night on the many different bills that uh, are attempts to undermine the propositions, uh, protections of Prop 13, which is the, the proposition that, that uh, limited how much you could get taxed on your property. He's also, uh, David Wolf is also responsible for putting together an annual report card for 120 legislators. Uh, so he knows a lot about the individual folks and what's going on in, in terms of movements in the state. And so he's going to be speaking that night. There's also going to be a 50, 50 raffle fundraiser and, uh, Bill Beeler, who is one of the key guys on the board over there says that, uh, that they have gubernatorial candidate, John Cox coming up, uh, in the future. They don't have a date set yet, but, and then also constitutional sheriff, Richard Mack, M A C K. You may be hearing about this term constitutional sheriffs. You might not understand, uh, who has power, uh, and how the power rankings work, work among counties, state, federal, et cetera, et cetera. But county sheriffs are the most powerful person, uh, people in the county, county sheriffs, elected county sheriffs. And so, uh, Sheriff John Agostino or Agostini of El Dorado County uh, told the federal employees in the state parks, the national forests, like El Dorado National Forest, Tahoe National Forest, to go fly a kite when they kept harassing citizens and citing them for various things. He told them to stand down and put their guns away. And he also sent a letter to, if you remember, when Obama and Biden we're threatening to do all these unilateral uh, taking your guns from you. Augustini basically sent a letter and told him to go fly a kite, that he was the sheriff of El Dorado County. And uh, he's going to be following the Constitution. And if they don't want to, that's up to them. But El Dorado County was sticking with the Constitution. So that would be all that we need to say about that. So Richard Mack is coming from that bent uh, and he's a constitutional sheriff. And there's a, there's a movement among sheriffs in California to tell all these legislators to go screw yourself. Uh, we're going to follow the constitution of the United States of America, right? So, uh, David Wolf, go check him out. I, I think I met David here. I think he was on the air one day here. Wasn't he here one day? You think he was here one day? Did he? But anyway, I won't get sidetracked on that. I want to get back on my topic. The other people that uh, have helped us a lot, uh, and uh, I've known them for years, is the elite security people. Monty Hecker owns it. And I just want to say, you know, all, there's a lot of jobs out there all of a sudden. I just talked to, uh, by the way, I'm just talking to Ted Holmes, who runs a plumbing doctor before I came here. And his question to me, he called me while I was in Vietnam, and he said, do you think that that if you had a plumbing need and you called for a plumber and a female showed up, would you have a problem with that? And I said, not at all. It do, gender doesn't make any difference to me. He said, really? No big deal? He said, I'm taking a poll. I'm taking a survey. I said, why are you doing that? He said, well, I got a lady that wants to be trained as a plumber. And he said, I can't find plumbers. Isn't that amazing? He said, we're short plumbers. And he said, I, I can't find people that are off drugs. will show up at work. Right. And will actually do the job. 
and behave themselves. So I have a nice lady that, that is willing, that wants to be a plumber. And he said, I'm thinking about training her. I, I want to make sure people would, I said, honestly, man. And I guess some of the, um, property management firms that he works for, they said, Oh, we would love to have a lady plumber, bring them on baby. So anyway, uh, there's jobs out there. And, uh, so elite security's got jobs. In fact, I saw on Facebook, they were, they were looking for people who wanted to get into the guard business, security guard business. So if you're interested, uh, dial up seven, four, nine, zero, two, eight, zero. And, and so I know there's a number of counties listen to us. So as far as I know, they elite security is operating in Yuba, Sutter, Butte, and the Redding area. I think is that Shasta County? I think that's Shasta, didn't it? Yeah. So elite security is here located in Yuba County and you can go on their website and check out, uh, and probably even connect with them off their website. If you don't want to just dial it, you know, a lot of you millennials, you can't even, you haven't learned how to talk to people yet feel comfortable on the phone. So if you go to elite universal security.com, all one word, elite universal security.com. The other thing that's cool about universal uh, elite is that they have a academy that they train their own people and they'll train you to do whatever you want. They have classes. So if you want to get your uh, license to carry a gun, you can go to API Academy. Uh, api-academy.com you can use the same number 7490280 but they got all kinds of cool classes uh and and on that website you can check out which classes are being offered coming up right and so maybe you're getting ready to graduate from high school and you'd like to take a class jump on it api-academy.com and uh, you can check out what they have offered, but you can get a jump on on uh, some of your training. So CCW licenses, that's the, the firearm license, guard card training, pepper spray training, handcuff training, taser training, de-escalation training. Uh, and they could give you a clue if you're short of money. Sometimes one stop will help finance some of your classes. So check it out. So I was talking about, uh, before we broke for the commercial commercials, I was talking about whether your child is secure on the campus. And my contention is no. Now, now l last year and years before they gave campuses the right <clears throat> for teachers to carry or not a gun. Now the legislature of the state of California has forbidden any teacher <coughs> to carry a gun on campus, which makes the campus uh, susceptible and vulnerable to a nutcase coming on there and damaging your kids. Eric Houston, we had one of the first school shootings in the state of California, and Eric Houston went on that campus. He was a former student on Lindhurst campus and shot the place up. All it would have taken was a couple teachers with guns to shoot the sucker and put him out of his misery. So now they've stopped that. The question is, is your child susceptible or vulnerable to people that prey on them in the form of a teacher or security or guards or janitors or any other kind of employee on that campus? And my contention is they are not. Because what happens is when there's an accusation placed against anybody in the government, they immediately get all kinds of protection about, uh, of their name, which I think is wrong. I think that teachers need to be informed. If one of the teachers on campus or a worker on campus is accused of something, they should be given what the accusation is and they should be given their name and they, then would have uh, some tools to work with on decisions they want to make about their kids going to class over there instead of calling Lou Benninger and trying to find out what's going on because the campus won't talk to them, right? So uh, I mentioned earlier in the last half hour that years ago when Jim Whitaker was running for office, I was contacted. I, I really didn't know Jim. I knew his parents. But a couple came to me and said that the, 
the female of the couple had been uh, touched inappropriately twice by him in 1998, and they went to Bill Highland. Uh, the report went to Bill Highland, and he did nothing about it. She was getting ready to go to college, and she thought, I don't need this in my life. I got too many things going on. I'm not, she didn't have confidence anything was going to happen anyway because nothing did happen. So she just walked away from it. And like a lot of women I know have been molested, they just live with it, right? Do you know women have been molested? I know in our church, tons of women have been molested. It's amazing to me by relatives, by neighbors, by coaches, et cetera, et cetera. You just saw the big deal with Dr. Nazar molesting all those many, many young, young, young gymnasts that were on our Olympics teams. I think he just got up to 170 years, wasn't it? Like, thank God for that judge. Uh, you know, to me, the, the role of teachers and the trust and the the, the uh, their resp level of responsibility is huge when we trust our children from five years old on up and even in preschool. Uh, the problem is like we the problem is we face is it even a person, a teacher or whatever that goes through a background check and has a clean background check? You don't know what lurks in the heart of men and women, do you? The Bible says that we're all sinners. We got that funky, gnarly, sidewinder, a tendency to just like a hog. You do not have to teach a hog to live in the, in the pigsty. They just naturally have an affinity for it. And human beings have an affinity to get kinky. Did you know that? I had a gal tell me, Talked to her on the phone. She called me a while back. She had been beaten up by her husband, who was a deputy, who was a officer for a uh, deputy for Sutter County. And I tried to help her once before, and she didn't want to want to help. She called me and said that she had had group sex with her husband and a deputy DA. Uh, that you know something, people. When folks do weird stuff, would you trust a deputy who cheats on his wife having sex with the deputy DA? How, how do people, should we trust district attorneys and deputy DAs who cheat at, at other areas? They cheat on their taxes. They don't follow the law themselves. And let they, and yet they want to rule over you and prosecute you. How does that work? So there are a number of women, young women. Now the other one that hasn't been able to get any resolve is a gal that claims that Jim Whitaker took a video up her skirt. And the mother's been for three years. She was on Fox News telling her story the other day, I'm told. But she tried to get the report from Yuba City Police Department, and they wouldn't release it for some reason. They probably have some legitimate reason. The bottom line is it happened in a school event, and she can't get any resolve. I think she, I don't know if she pulled her kid out of school. I think she probably did after that happened three years ago in talking to a lady the other day. Cause I, I had said previously that the family of the lady that I talked to, I was told went to Carl Adams and reported to him and he wouldn't do anything, but it actually was another woman, young woman whose father said he'd gone to Carl Adams about Mr. Whitaker and Carl Adams wouldn't do anything. Jim Whitaker is innocent till proven guilty. But honestly, folks, when you have multiple women, young women, I think it's very, do, do people lie? Sometimes they definitely do. 
when I take a survey in groups and ask if anybody ever lied in here, everybody usually raises their hand. That's why one of the Ten Commandments is don't lie, because it's a big problem in humanity. So do people lie? Yeah, they do. They even lie when you say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God? And they also lie when the pastor says, do you take this woman to have and to hold and swear that you're going to be faithful to her, the sickness and health, rich or poor, they swear, right? Take an oath. They break those oaths all the time, right? Go have sex with somebody else. Then, then they want to do a business deal with you and tell you how honest they are. They're going to keep their word, right? So when you have a number of young women that keep coming forward, uh, at what point are you, are you going to listen to these girls and give, give them their day and pay attention to them? And they're saying that more happened than just he talked to them or he invited them to have a time alone with them, right? Or he commented on their bodily features. It went more than that in these cases. I think the district does themselves a disservice when they hide the identity of the teacher. What it does is place in fact, I think I was starting to get into this before the break. I want to ask you, who is responsible to protect the kids? Who? The teachers aren't. The union protects the teachers, and basically the teachers are protecting themselves. They're in it for themselves. So who's protecting the kids? Oh, you know, I, I get so tired. I, I work for Church of Glad Tidings, and I was lectured by county officials. Oh, are you guys are you guys mandated reporters? I said, you know, I got in fights with people over foster care and taking kid, babies out of prison. I thought, don't lecture me over foster care. You guys have more kids die in your foster care system than we'd ever have in the church taking babies out of prison, for God's sake. Who's protecting the kids over there at Yuba City High School? Who's standing up for the kids? Who's believing the kids? How serious are these investigations? How come we can't find reports of kids uh, complaining? How come teachers know, have a view of, of Jim Whitaker? And yet there's nothing ever done about it. Oh, yeah, we knew all about that. It's kind of like the old Harvey Weinstein. Everybody said, oh, we knew about Harvey down there in Hollywood. We knew about Harvey. Really? Oprah knew about Harvey. All these people knew about Harvey, all these directors, and nobody did anything about Harvey. But they all, they're all in on it after all hell breaks loose, right? Are we out of time? We're out of time. We'll be right back. We've got another half a show to do. Hello, Liberty-loving patriots. This is Chris Ann Hall, Liberty's lobbyist and founder of Liberty First University. If Samuel Adams were still alive, he'd be sure to tune in to Live with Lou every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon right here on KMYC 1410 a.m. The Patriot. And so should you. You can also catch my show Monday through Friday on ctnlifestyle.com. Wow. Lou Benninger here. You're listening to Live with Lou. Interesting uh, comments there by Michelle Malkin about immigration. I was uh, on the plane uh, leaving Saigon for Taipei, Taiwan on the way home, and I sat next to a young Vietnamese woman, and we got to talking, and I said, oh, where are you headed? Because we were going to catch a hub in Taipei, and, and I, I was going to come on to San Francisco, and I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to Toronto. I said, oh, what are you going to do in Toronto? She said, I'm going to school there. I said, oh, why would you choose Toronto? And she said, well, uh, U.S. wouldn't accept me. And uh, she's, she, uh, I said, oh, where do you live? I said, oh, for you're from Vietnam. She said, I, I live in the 6th District. And she made a point in commenting, it's a very well-to-do district. In other words, it's a modern, that's where the, there's certain districts where people of means in Vietnam live, and the 6th District is one of them. So her point was that, she, you know, 
her parents can afford to send her to a foreign school. She wanted to come to the U.S. We rejected her. Now, it's fascinating to me. We would reject a Vietnamese student who does not want to stay here. They just want to come and she wants to come and get her degree here and then go home. We would reject her, but we will take somebody that can't speak English. This gal could was bilingual. Uh, who's going to mooch off the system and get welfare, free education, free health. And, but we're not going to take a Vietnamese student who's going to pay our college out of foreign. They're going to pay foreign tuition fees. Unbelievable. The whole, the whole system. If you're looking at a merit based immigration, you would allow that student in At, at the other commercial that ran was regarding trauma intervention program. I wanted to remind everyone, uh, since I'm involved with trauma intervention that we have a, our annual training. If you want to get involved with trauma intervention, you ever thought you want to do some volunteer work in our community of Yuba Sutter counties. The other day I had a Nevada County resident read an ad in the territory dispatch about tip trauma intervention and read it in Nevada County. And so I didn't know where she's from because these cell with cell numbers. Now you can't tell where people are from. So I had this long conversation about how tip worked, what you got to do this. And she said, well, I don't think I could respond in 20 minutes. I said, Oh, well, where do you live? She's at Nevada County. I said, yeah, no kidding. So, uh, if you, if you're interested in doing some volunteer work and you want to work and assist emergency responders and help your fellow citizens in the most difficult experience they've ever had in their life, uh, you can get involved with trauma intervention and we train people once a year. Sometimes people say, Oh, you need to train more than once a year. Well, it's a lot of work. It's a two week training course over a two week period, not two weeks, but it's about 35 to 40 in class hours. And, uh, and the, the commitment is that once you're trained, you go out on, uh, you take three shifts a month, 12, 12 hour shifts and go out on emergency calls. And we call you from wherever you are in the community and you respond during your shift. And then we have a training meeting once a month. If you're interested in providing emotional and practical support to people right in the middle of the worst tragedy they could think of, you could uh, get involved with us. You could call me at 713-1838. That's a 530 area code, 713-1838, or text me because I'm on the air right now. Uh, and we can talk. Or you can go to our website at yubasuttertip.org yubasuttertip.org and you could email me off that you can check it out on the website all you know how we operate but it's a good organization we're not rookies this is our 24th year in the yuba Sutter area we've responded to over 10,000 emergency calls we're not playing so um that's that you know what this some of these things just bug me you know how the 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 media this has nothing to do with right or wrong with Trump. This just Trump's just Trump's just going to be wrong no matter what he does. Fight, you know, if he solves the uh, the problem of cancer, diabetes, he's still going to be wrong. If he had, if he succeeds at world peace, even though Obama already got the peace prize, he's wrong. You remember they they threatened. He said he's such. Not, you know, the latest thing has been mentally ill, right? That's the latest thing. First of all, he's not healthy. Now he's mentally ill. They don't even believe the Surgeon General. It's just, it's just, it doesn't matter what you say, what authority, if, whether it's a scientist, it's like everybody's tainted. So we're not going to believe anything, the media. So they say he's going to start a war with Russia. But when you look at the record, it was Bill uh, Clinton that gave nukes to North Korea. Did you remember that? He gave nuclear te- technology, et cetera, and and uh, products to North Korea. Remember? And it was Obama that did the same thing to Iran. Do you remember that? And then it was Hillary who helped sell off when she was Secretary of State a huge amount of the uranium to the Russians. Now, I want you to think about that. Bill with North Korea, Obama with Iran, Hillary with Russia, but then it's Trump's going to get us into a war. I, I don't know. So I was talking about before we took a break 
about the situation of, of your kids on campus. And we're going to play a clip in a minute uh, from John Stossel. Since this is uh, ch- uh, National Charter School Week, uh, I'm going to play a clip here in a minute. But I want to just I want to hammer home to you the question of who's protecting your kids. And it doesn't take long, as the woman from Piedmont, California said, if you don't deal with funky teachers, bad teachers, teachers that are immoral, teachers that are profane. I remember a friend of mine I went to high school with used to be at Faith Christian School as a coach, and he just had a foul mouth, called people effers and everything else. I thought, why don't you, you're a Christian school, why don't you fire him? They thought, but they, they had compromised their ethics at Faith Christian, and they'd rather win a football game than get rid of a guy who called people an effer, right? What happens to people's brains? At the end of the day, we're training children to be good citizens. Where do we miss this here? And yet we have teachers... Like I, when I was teaching character at some of these schools, when I went to school, teachers actually dressed nicely. In fact, they still do at Mary Kovalod campus where Doug Eshman's a principal. But out at Cedar Lane, some of them dress like, they look like homeless people with just a fresh set of clothes. Levi's and an old flannel shirt. I thought, this is what we want our kids to look up to? It doesn't work for me. And uh, so maybe it's time to, like, go on to run to Randy Thomason's site and <clears throat> what is it, removeyourchild.com? I always forget this, removeyourchild.org. <clears throat> Save California. You can go to savecalifornia.org and figure out how to get your kids. He has all kinds of alternative for your kids. But I'm telling you, who is who is taking care of your kids? How long does it take before your kids lose confidence? Like, hey, I'm not going to say anything. All you do is get your head chopped off. Nobody's going to do anything. Carl Adams, this this one guy that went to Carl Adams said, the guy, Carl Adams went over all the gnarly questions he was going to ask his daughter. And the guy said, hey, forget about it. I'm not even going to do this. I'm just going to, we're just going to move on, suffer the consequences of being molested at the high school. All right. So, uh you have some options. Here's, here's what I would do if I had a child in the public school system, the government schools. If you have an accusation against a teacher or against a student or whatever, I would go in to whoever the appropriate key person is to take a complaint, and I would record that meeting. And then I would ask for a copy of of the report, if they're going to do an investigation, I would ask for a copy of that report and not trust that it's going to go in somebody's file. Honestly, people, this government that we got is falling apart and people aren't doing their jobs. And there are people that do nefarious things behind the scenes and they cannot be trusted. I like the, I like the air force motto. In God we trust, all others we monitor. The days of sending your kid to school and trusting all will be well are long over. Let me just say that again. The days of sending your kids to school and trust, and you go to work trusting that it's all going to be okay is over, and you better do your due diligence to make sure who your coaches are, Da, 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 da. And it's fascinating to me. I've had people at our church once in a while say, well, I don't know whether my kid's going to be safe in the nursery. Right. And we got, we got campus. We got more, we got more armed people on our church campus. When we have a meeting than they got at Yuba city high school, when there's 1500, 2000 kids, we got one cop on that campus. Nobody can pack any weapons because they're protecting our kids. I want you to think about that. They're protecting your kids. If an Eric Houston walked on Yuba city high school today, he could do as much damage as he did back in the eighties 
at Lenthurst. We haven't learned one thing. In fact, we've gone backwards. You know, I, I, I've told this before that they got a coach over there at Yuba City High School that I'm told that uh, if you want your kid to play, all you had to do is give, give him a little time in bed with you and your kid could move to first string. You know, people, what what is going on? Did, have you ever thought about that? We have district at, attorneys in the district attorney's office having sex with other people's uh, partners. We have, it's crazy what's going on. And I don't know how we're going to fix it. Steve Durfer, the sheriff of Yuba County, says, Lou, you know, we do our best to screen people, but when we notice character issues, uh, we have a system to deal with that. That's great when it works, right, when it's working. But when you are concealing the identity and protecting teachers and, and students are at risk, that's a bad sign, folks. And that is a union protection that is that is run off the run off the tracks. So uh, I guess the latest thing today is that the the case, the investigation uh, regarding Jim Whitaker, uh, for you that don't know from out of the area, he's also a supervisor in the sit in the county of Sutter. Uh, has been transferred from the Sutter County District Attorney <clears throat> to the Yuba County District Attorney. And some people are troubled by that. Uh, but I think that's a good thing because the supervisor, Sutter County Supervisors, approves the budget. They don't elect the district attorney or choose the district attorney, but they, they do approve the budget. And uh, And there could be accusations of favoritism towards any kind of uh, favorable ruling that went towards Jim Whitaker on behalf of the district attorney's office in Sutter County, since he's a supervisor and it'd be the Sutter County district attorney. So regardless of how people feel about it, to me, it was appropriate to move the move to a different agency. It's just like if there's an officer involved shooting, you want, you don't want the same agency of the officer that did the shooting to investigate him to make sure it was a, a righteous shooting. You want an outside entity to look at that, to have, to remove the appearance of evil. So district attorney, Pat McGrath in Yuba County will, will handle the investigation of whether there's any criminal activity or criminal action that needs to take place or prosecution needs to take place of uh, physical education education teacher Jim Whitaker so we'll see how we'll see how it plays out uh, <clears throat> okay I want to talk for a few minutes here about Jason Parker Jason Parker is a law enforcement 20-year uh, law enforcement professional in Yuba County and Sutter County who's had a great reputation but recently ran a, f a a, a foul of the district attorney he works for is the chief investigator. Amanda Hopper is the district attorney. And um, he brought to her attention rumors in the office that she was having sexual relations with one of his employees. And he thought she ought to know about what was being said about her. He thought he was doing her a favor. Instead, she banished him to uh, remove him from his job with no cause. And, um, uh, although they're trying to make it look like there's a cause, they violated his employment rights repeatedly. They did not file appropriate government employee procedures. And now they finally fired him. He has an appeal, but it's interesting when the government has all these rules, the government creates the laws, then they don't follow the rules and laws that they actually created. They just go rogue, as they say. They go rogue. And so I'm going to talk for a little bit about Jason Parker uh, when we come back. All right. Welcome back. This is Live with Lou. 
And uh, for you that are out there in these other counties, not you, Besutter, uh, this may not relate well to you, but you may have situations like it in your counties where county people have gone rogue, county leaders, and uh, good people get hurt. And I remember when the guy was testifying about Benghazi, and he was a lifetime uh, civil servant in the State Department, uh, patriot, conservative guy, could tell by his, his testimony before the uh, subcommittee for the Congress. And uh, it was trying to get to the bottom of what happened in Magazi, and, and he was giving honest answers. And uh, it cost him. It cost him his career. And though he was a righteous person and doing a good job and loyal to the United States. And he was exposing the corruption of the Clinton secret Clinton and Obama regime. And, uh, you wonder what happens to good people and why you end up with so many nefarious people in government. It's like a lot of the good people just get run out or leave. And so Jason Parker started with Yuba County Sheriff's department and then uh, transferred over to Yuba City PD and Net 5, worked undercover in narcotics. And then when he was done there, went back to Yuba City for a while on patrol and then into detectives and was instrumental in uncovering, uh, resurrecting a lot of cold murder cases, particularly Norteño, Sedeño murder cases, and putting guys in prison. He then uh, applied for and got the head investigator job under new attorney Amanda Hopper. And things went great for the first maybe eight, eight to ten months. And then, as I began to say before the break, there had been rumors in the office about uh, Amanda Hopper recently divorced, having sexual relations with one of the married uh employees there another investigator and so jason parker who is over that investigator began to discuss with him this situation how that's inappropriate having sex with the boss if that's what was happening he didn't know but that's what was being said so as a as a leader in the department he felt obligated which i would have too to go not only to the guy involved but the district attorney the boss and after that, he was in put on administrative leave. He was first moved out of the office into another building across town, which was totally inappropriate, unable to oversee the staff of investigators. The county then violated one protocol, one rule, one government code after another, violating Jason Parker's rights as an employee, government employee. There was outside investigative organizations hired to look into the accusations made against Parker by the attorney, district attorney, and basically uh, they were not substantiated. But recently, I guess while I was overseas, they finally, even though uh, Parker had a couple hearings, uh, he was officially fired, but he does have an appeal. Now, we have a major problem in the district attorney's office. I just heard the other day that now the, their, the IRS has come in and is garnishing her wages, the district attorney's wages, for not, paying, not filing or paying her taxes. You know, people, I want you to think about, you remember when Obama went into office and he was picking his cabinet members and you know how they vet the camp Remember, they didn't vet Obama, but they vetted the cabinet members because they had to go through a confirmation process, right? You remember the number, remember Geithner, he didn't pay his taxes. He cheated on his taxes and we, and they still confirmed him as secretary of the treasury. There was another guy. Secretary of the Commerce, I can't remember his name, black man, he didn't pay his taxes. And I think Solis, I think she was Secretary of Labor, 
She didn't pay her taxes. All these people had to go in and pay back taxes. And I think, why are we picking people? Why do we want people in places, high places of trust who do not do not follow the law? Then when you look at IRS agents themselves, a lot of them don't pay their taxes. The IRS agents don't even pay their taxes. Why would you keep a person employed for the government and the IRS who does not pay their taxes? And then you have a district attorney and you have a county council, Gene Jordan, who do not follow the rules. These people are both attorneys. They violate their own government rules that are supposed to. Who do you, what are the government rules there to protect? They're to protect us, the citizens. But when they want to ignore the rules, they just ignore the rules. And then they don't care because, you know, if it was their money they were going to get sued over, they might have a little bit more skin in the game. But the money that's going to be paid to Jason Parker when he wins his lawsuit, that he's now naming all five supervisors, and, and he's going to name individuals like the head of human resources, that would be you and my tax money that's going to pay him off. You think, well, he's insurance will pay him off. It'll pay part of it, but the rest of it, there is a deductible. Just like when you crash your car, there's a deductible, right? Or when you go to the doctor, there's a deductible. But what's it say about the people who are ruling over us? You know, and this is fascinating about the supervisors. I find this, a, John Missler with the Territorial Dispatch, he used to be a supervisor in Yuba County in the 5th District. We have these discussions a lot. And we, why do we elect people to office when they surrender their brain and their decision-making power to bureaucrats? Why do we need elected officials if bureaucrats are making all the decisions and making wrong decisions and then we get sued over them? So when the supervisors say, oh, well, you know, our fine staff are just doing such a great job, we're going with their view on this. Screw their view. It's like, yeah, you take their view into, into consideration, but but the reason we elected supervisors, city council people to office is to have enough brains and to do, do enough sweat, uh, sweat equity on the issue to know something about it themselves, to see whether it fits their policies, views, or their political persuasion, you know, their philosophy. Why would you just abdicate to the staff all the time? unless you really do agree with them from your point of view. Otherwise we don't need you and pay 80 in Yuba County. We're paying 80 grand a piece for them to abdicate to Robert Bendorf. Just because he's, he's the administrator and he knows a lot. The reason we have supervisors is for them to know a lot. So we have a, a district attorney now that, Part of her wage actually goes directly to the IRS because she can't can't keep her taxes straight and didn't file her taxes on time. Are you kidding me? And that's the person that's managing and firing. Now, this is an interesting thing. I was talking to Jason Park the other day. He said, Lou, do you realize that when she went, the district attorney went in the newspaper without any foundation in the investigation and said that I lied. Parker saying he's, he himself, she said his, her accusation was that David Williams, another investigator and Parker both lied on investigations. You know what that does? He says, according to law enforcement, you can't get a job anywhere else, right? You have a district attorney saying you lied. Nobody's going to take a risk on you hiring you anywhere else. Or if Dave Williams is going into private practice, he's an attorney as well as, as a cop. Maybe attorneys won't trust his word. And there's no basis in the investigation that said Parker lied. Yet, so they don't want, so she, the, the district attorney doesn't want him anymore in her office. And pretty much she poisoned the pot for his future in the law enforcement profession in any other office, right? 
something to think about. So one thing after another, and the we'll be paying out hundreds of thousands of dollars because uh, they have violated because they just decided we're not going to follow the government rules on hiring. You know, the supervisors could could make the thing right in one sense by rejecting the firing and hiring him back. But what's said in the paper is already said in the paper. I remember Dr. Cassidy when they were trying to, Dr. Cassidy was a head health official for Yuba County for over 25, it turned out to his full career was about 25 years. But in the middle of that, one supervisor got a bean up her nose about him and tried to fire him and threw everything, every nail strip under the tires that's possible. And at one point he just finally sued the county because they said so many funky things in the paper that pretty much, I mean, it's, it never disappears. It's in the internet. So if he was trying to get a job somewhere else, everybody's going to see that huge controversy surrounding this doctor accusing him of, uh, making money off the medications and over medicating and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, all lies, but it's there said about them. Right. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. The supervisors would be righteous about this and stand on their own two feet instead of being dragged around by bureaucrats, uh, and go look at the, go look at the investigation themselves and talk to the, the, the attorney representing Parker themselves, instead of just sitting back and do the easy thing and just pay out taxpayer money and rip the taxpayer off. They, at least if they did the right thing, they'd force this whole issue, but they probably won't. Well, did you see, did you notice where the, the, uh, the military veterans wanted to put an ad in the NFL, just suggesting that people stand, please not forcing people to stand, stand, please. And they rejected it. I want you to just think about this. Uh, I, I, I had, I've had to quit listening to KNBR. I used to listen to their sports talk show all the time. And they are so rude and re politically ridiculous. I've had to just, it, they just make me sick. And a lot of these political commentation or political talk show things have turned into political. They throw a football by you every once in a while or a baseball, but mainly they are just, uh, screwy liberals. But I wanted to show you the hypocrisy of the NFL and their, uh, unwillingness to address this, uh, disrespect of the military and disrespect of our law enforcement. Uh, and, and they're kind of their, their thing of, Hey, well, you know, we're just letting people have free speech rights. First amendment, da, 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 da. Yet that's their employer, right? The NFL is their employer. Uh, you don't have, you can't just say whatever you want to, when you're being employed to do a job, right? Like if you're working for Popeye's chicken, you can't tell the customer to F off and keep your job, right? Right? That's you could say, oh, it's my first amendment right to tell them to F off. Well, you might yeah, maybe it is, but not to keep your job as well. So let me just show you some of the things that the NFL has taken stands on in the past. In 2012, uh the NFL had an issue with Tim Tebow kneeling for each game to pray. He wasn't protesting. He was praying. They had a problem with that. They had also, they also had a problem with him wearing three sixteen John third chapter 16 verse as a part of his eye black. They made him take it off. They're trying to protect you and me from being offended, right? 2013, the NFL fined Brandon Marshall for wearing green cleats to raise awareness for people with mental health disorders. In 2014, Robert Griffin III entered a post-game press conference wearing a shirt that said, no, K-N-O-W, Jesus, 
K-N-O-W, peace. No Jesus, no peace. But he was forced to turn it inside out by an NFL uniform inspector before speaking at the podium. Saved everybody's lives that day, didn't they? In 2015, D'Angelo Williams was fined for wearing, quote unquote, find the cure, eye black for breast cancer awareness. Couldn't do that. In 2015, William Gay was fined for wearing purple cleats to raise awareness for domestic violence. I think the NFL, didn't they purge domestic violence out of all their players? 2016, the NFL prevented the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, from wearing a decal on their helmet in honor of five Dallas police officers that were killed in the line of duty. You remember that the terrorists killed five police officers and they wanted to show their solidarity with law enforcement, but the NFL thought, you know something, we just don't want to step on anybody's toes that may have a problem with law enforcement, so we're not going to allow you to wear that little black decal in 2016, the NFL threatened to find players who wanted to wear cleats to commemorate certain types of cleats or colored cleats to commemorate the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy. Just so incredible, right? We have to be politically correct because some people probably thought the 9-11 tragedy was okay, baby. So... Uh, these guys that are so focused on free speech weren't so focused on free speech in a lot of other areas. Uh, for issues like God, social causes such as mental health, cancer, domestic violence, cops killed uh, arbitrarily or memory in 9-11. Can't do that. But disrespecting our flag, now that takes it to a whole nother level. I heard some guys, I was on my way trying to get through San Francisco traffic, so I turned on KNBR and that Tom Tolbert just makes me sick. That guy's so liberal. Uh, but the fact is, I'm all for Tol Tolbert being liberal. It's okay. It's okay with me. It's, it's like, hey, it's his life to live. I mean, he's serving God, not me. Or whether he likes to serve God or not, uh, he's going to answer to God one of these days. So if he, if he, so they were talking about this new football league they're going to start that's starting up, and in that league they're going to demand that everybody stand. And so he found something really egregious about the fact that people should feel an obligation to stand for the flag. I thought, you know something, I just can't listen to you guys anymore. This is absurd. And uh, Or to stand up for the national anthem. Um, so anyway, it's just uh, pretty sad. So any anyway, what you'll note what you won't notice at the Super Bowl and obviously that so Super Bowl ads are way way expensive. Come on man, that's unbelievable. So that's that. Pretty sad. But uh, all right. So we got a couple of minutes or are we about 3 minutes. Okay. Have you been did you catch this FISA? You heard this term FISA warrants, FISA surveillance? Did, have you been picking up what that's all about? FISA stands for Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. There's a special court that when the government, high up government, federal government is concerned that our security is being breached or could be breached, they go before a special court to get a surveillance warrant to tap into or uh, penetrate the communications of people, foreigners, that may be uh, going to be a danger or a threat to the United States of America. You got that? That's FISA court, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. But during the Obama administration and maybe b before with Bush, they had allowed the FISA court to start spying on Americans. Did you Have you been following this? I'm just kind of catching up with this. I'm a little slow. So recently there was a new, they had to re-vote. They have to re-vote on this stuff every once in a while. And this violates FISA. If to inspect or check into Americans, we have rights that law enforcement at any, any level just can't, just can't willy nilly go after our personal freedoms. 
in that's the fourth amendment to the constitution clearly states that government searches and seizures are only lawful when five a five prong standard is met number one a warrant there's a warrant in other words a judge has to be talked to about this number two it's based on probable cause number three it's supported by an oath or affirmation by the people checking into it Four, particularly describing that has to describe the places to be searched and it has to describe the persons or things to be seized so they just can't have a wide open I want to check into Lou Benninger because I don't like him I think he's going to do something funky but they have to spec specify the cause take an oath about it and they have to just talk about the place they want to search and persons or things they want to seize so the majority of your and my representatives voted to eliminate all that that that's gone now do you know that that fourth amendment protection is gone and i'll i'll finish up on this when we finish uh, the commercials here to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-9300. Wiki was getting into that song. He was starting to lean back and smile and everything. <laughs> We're down to the last few minutes here today. I just wanted to just emphasize this FISA thing again. This is a mind blower, and I know because they're not teaching civics and how this government works, uh, a lot of people are just not with this. But what's going on here is the violence, FISA surveillance. That's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. They reauthorize FISA surveillance upon Americans in non-terrorist cases. This is totally new territory. That's And you're going to hear people like, and you've been hearing people, if you've been paying attention, Rand Paul is furious about this kind of stuff. And it's what they call unfettered, un, unhindered access to your personal life and my personal life. And, uh, that's new territory. And I think it started under the, what, what they called the Patriot act under George Bush after the attack, uh, nine 11. And it, so anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to move on from that because I got a lot, I got way too much to talk about, but, uh, it's just, you know, to me, it's wild. So I write some for the territorial dispatch and some of you don't get it because you're in the wrong counties. I had a, like I mentioned, it goes up in Nevada County, Yuba Sutter County. <clears throat> I don't know whether any make it down into towards Lincoln. I've been trying to take some down there to sun city. Cause I know we got people interested in conservative things down there, but, um, actually there's more territorial dispatches being delivered uh, well, they're the only delivery up in the hills of Yuba County. So, uh, there's actually more in Yuba County being delivered than the appeal Democrat. Um, so I wrote a couple articles there that you can look at. You can look at them online. If you're not from around here, uh, you can just go to territorial dispatch.biz 
and pull up the current issue, and it's right on the front page there. And I wrote an article about a guy named Paul Ehrlich, who is, I think he's 85 or 88 or something like that. He's still collecting a government check. He wrote the population bomb in 1970 or 72 with his wife, Anne, totally a crock of crap, uh, made millions of dollars off of it, was totally in error, predicted that the life uh, what do they call it? The, uh, oh, li average life expectancy would reduce to uh, like 48 or 46 or something in 1980 would go down to that because of famine, there wouldn't be enough food. And that year, I think I wrote in the article that it ended up being because we are past there now by some it actually ended up being like 77 instead of 40 something. The guy's been proven wrong over and over again, but he's, he's like an icon. Anyway, it's an article about that, that I think you'd be, be helpful to you if you bought, bought into this global warming baloney and all this nonsense, this green stuff they've been talking about since the 1970s and earth day and all that kind of stuff. The other article is about black people and how the charade and the baloney continues to go on regarding black people. And many of the blacks still buy it themselves. The fact that Republicans get blamed, conservatives get blamed for slavery, resistance to civil rights, resistance to black vote, resistance to this, resistance to integration, and it was just, you know, the, the conservatives get blamed for the Ku Klux Klan. All of that, 100% inaccurate. It's just the opposite. And so I wrote an article about, you know, it's interesting that on that clip we just played, Democrats were talking there about voting for Trump. One was a black man. And Barack Obama, it, you know, here's the thing that just puzzles me. When a black person refers to his people or her people, you know who they're referring to? They're not referring to Americans, black, white, red, and yellow, all flavors. They're referring to black people. Now, that to me is racist. That's racist. And those are the various people that are blaming me for being a racist. But when I say my people... I'm not referring to white people. When I say our people, I'm usually referring to Americans. Like if I'm in Vietnam and I refer to our people, I'm referring to people over across the water. Not that they're better than Vietnamese. It's just that's where I'm from, back home, homeboys. And um, so I wrote an article about the lack of care. For instance, Obama says, my people are, you know, his people, black people, but he didn't do Jack for his people, black people. I don't know whether he doesn't care about them or he's just trying to woo their vote. Some people, I, I kind of believe when they use that term, our people, but in eight years, he didn't do Jack diddly for black people, but in 365 days by just improving the economy, there are fewer unemployed black men than there have been since the history of keeping records on black folks and white folks and Asian folks and Mexican folks. Well, you know, it used to be just like we're all one, nobody paid attention to color and we had a certain amount of unemployed. Now that then the social scientists began to say, well, we want to know how many blacks are, unemployed versus whites versus Mexican versus Asian. By the way, if you don't know this, the ethnic group with a far, far, very tiny group of unemployed are Asians. Hold that thought. You can process that for a while. <clears throat> so I wrote an article uh, about this and how the Trump uh, revolution, if you want to use it, has really helped blacks and just took 365 days. And uh, when you think, it's amazing to me how 
Democrats write off the increase in jobs. They write off a thousand and fifteen hundred dollar checks to employees by the millions. Like, oh, just the other day, this uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz just said, oh, I don't think thousand dollars go very well anymore. Well, maybe not for her. When she's making millions, right? Got her hand in the till. But everybody I know in our church, a thousand dollars, everybody with thumbs up, up and down the up and down the seats, the rows, thousand dollars. God bless you and all that stuff. Thank you, Jesus. That'd be there'd be a lot of thank you, Jesus is going on over there if they could pick up a thousand dollars, right? And so it's amazing to me how they minimize. I think it was um, Pelosi that referred to it as crumbs. Well, if you know, she's one of the more wealthy people in the world. She and her husband live on top of, uh, I don't know if she's up on Knob Hill or one of those hills overlooking the Pacific Ocean, lives in an amazing mansion. You and, it, and it's amazing to me that you Democrats, they just write that stuff off as just like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I believe. Screw the blacks. You know, I, it's just unbelievable. Uh, so anyway, I wrote, wrote an article on the damage of immigration to the blacks. That's who's really paying, paying for this. Uh, this illegal immigration is the lower income workers. So anyway, I'm not going to redo the article. You can read it for yourself. Here's another one that I, this stuff just is so, when you look at how much money is being wasted, it's unbelievable. The government, federal government is giving a San Diego state professor $430,000 to study Mexican grocery store purchases. You know the reason? Because they're obese. You know, you get these hot Mexican kids, girls, 15, 18, 19 years old. Once they have a kid and start knocking down all those burritos and tacos, they, they look like a brick shit house, man. They're big. They're packing like 250, 300 pounds going down the street. And so I could tell them what would fix them, but I don't have a credential, so it doesn't work. So they're given nearly a half a million dollars. And here's what this guy's going to do. I want you to, if you're listening today and you're working for $15 an hour, you could figure this out. Here's the, here's what the guy, I wrote all kinds of grants trying to get money for a rehab. We had one time I could never get a grant. Oh, I got just the G word. Would, I couldn't sleep at night. The G word grant it'd throw me on a wild one. So here's the proposal. The proposed research will identify in-store and parent-child factors that influence grocery purchasing behavior. In other words, why do they buy those tortillas? What's getting into them? Well, why the, all that cheese and lard, right? A behavior that occurs multiple times each week. In other words, you go to the grocery store multiple times each week, so they're going to monitor that multiple times each week behavior that has implications for diet. In other words, if you keep buying that fat stuff, that lard and putting it in those refried beans, that makes your butt one foot wider in 10 years, right? So they're going to monitor the purchasing behavior and the dietary intake. Now this goes way beyond old Michael, uh, Mayor Michael back there in New York when he tried to cut down the big sugar drinks, right? So through food and beverages. So they're going to like watch them like we monitor the birds. And they're going to they're going to see what kind of behavior amongst the Mexican population of obese people is is modifiable. And so uh this this a Latino guy, Castro uh, oh, it's a female, I think. Professor Iana Castro of San Diego State's College of Business Administration. She got a health department federal grant to conduct a study. Now, I want you to think about this. This is the smartest people in our country. This is a professor. She's got a doctorate degree, old Iana. Iana's going to follow Mexican ladies around the grocery store. This I want you to think about this. You ever followed, do you ever stalk anybody? 
that she's going to stalk these Mexicans and she's going to analyze the conversations, their conversations. She's going to listen in on them. What, what are you going to, you're going to buy four of those four, six packs of those Dr. Peppers or what are you going to do? How many of those Dr. Peppers you drink a day over there? How much, how many gallons of ice cream are you going through a week? She'll analyze conversations from the entire shopping trip. In other words, she's going to be a roadie with the Mexican fatsos. And uh, she's going to analyze the entire shopping trip, particularly those between parents and children. In other words, the kid says, I want three of those ice creams. She said, oh, no problem. She plans to utilize eye tracking technology. Utilize eye tracking technology to determine the products that the shoppers eye land on the first. Right? How about them Twinkies, etc., or the Cerveza? For you out in all of us, that's beer. That's that's. I'm gonna bust in a little bilingual, a little bilingual, huh? Some of those Cervezas, you think that'll be? Yeah, those would be a big items. Cervezas and chips and guacamole. That might be a bad deal. Salsa and chips. I'll and beer. That'll put some weight on your butt. The grant sets out the project's hopes to find solutions that will help promote the adoption of healthier diets among the Mexican population. So identifying strategies with the potential to promote the adoption and maintenance of healthier food and beverage purchasing. Like how about not eating as much? How about that? Or no sugar. It's too easy for me to suggest it and save him $430,000. It just, you know, this is like, this is when you realize that the government has way too much money laying around, just spending it left and right. And the other thing for you California people and those that have had kids molested or killed by illegals, the new law as of January 1, all California law enforcement jurisdictions, that would be Marysville, Yuba City, Sutter County, Yuba County, Nevada County, Grass Valley, all California law enforcement jurisdictions. This law sharply limits them from cooperating with raids. Uh, take effect to arrest people in here illegally. It bars law enforcement officers from arresting people for civil immigration warrants or participating in joint task forces with federal officials to enforce immigration laws. Is that unbelievable or what? <clears throat> so when ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, conducts enforcement operations in a community that includes immigrants, uh, they're not going to get any help from the police. They're going to refuse it. In February, Santa Cruz officers assisted ICE in an operation that police officials believed would focus only on arresting MS-13 gang members from San, San It's one of the, either L or San Salvador. So anyway, on and on and on. That's that. I'm going to leave that alone and move on. Uh, I, I was going to try. Oh, is this some? Do you remember all those business people? that quit that business round table that Trump had. He, the other business got all, all frust, they got all frustrated with Trump and they quit. I wonder what they're saying now. Apple announced that they're going to expand 20,000 more jobs. They already have, Apple already has over 40,000 employees in the United States. Now they're going to add, they're going to go up by 50% in the United States alone. And it announced Apple, this is a guy, a homosexual, the leader of Apple's a homosexual dude, right? Did you know that? Yeah. So he's got a lot of reasons to be PO'd at Trump, even though Trump doesn't have a problem with homosexuals. He just doesn't want them in the wrong bathroom. Uh, but Apple has announced, this is where the dollar talks. They announced $350 billion in investment in the U.S. economy coming up. Unbelievable. And listen to this. This, this just cracks me up. Fiat Chrysler now says that their move to Mexico to build the Ram truck 
the heavy-duty Ram truck that's only sold in the U.S. They don't sell any of them in Mexico, but they went there in 2008 to build them. Now they're coming back. They're moving back, and they said, we made a mistake. And the reason is, is that tax de decrease, that corporate tax decrease, and the reducing regulations, the heavy-duty trucks, they're moving back. And they said, we made a corporate mistake in moving our entire plant to Mexico. And I'll never forget, in fact, you can look at it on YouTube, at a town hall meeting when Barack Obama was being interviewed during the Trump campaign for president, he just mocked Trump with the idea that somehow factories were ever going to return to the United States. I mean, you talk about an idiot for president. That's who we had for eight years. And the Democrats just snowed the population around here. So, oh, and finally, um, in terms of selling body parts with Planned Parenthood, and we've become used to it, and the only difference between us and the Asians is they eat them. We haven't eaten any yet. So if you haven't had any like fried or uh, barbecued <clears throat> or pickled children's feet or pickled innards of babies, uh, you know, you'll get used to it because at one point people weren't used to aborting babies. We got used to that. And now we, we denied and had our, put our heads in the sand about the fact that they were actually selling body parts of babies. So now we're over that. They were going to defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, now we're over that and we're continuing to fund Planned Parenthood. But the blacks have totally been snookered by Planned Parenthood. And uh, I want you to think about this. Despite making up 13% of the U.S. population, these are blacks, the Center for Disease Control, uh, their 2016 report points out that black babies made up a whopping 35% of the total abortions in 2013. I want you to think about that. When you hear the facts that Planned Parenthood targets black and Hispanic communities to put their abortion clinics in so they could purge Mexican and Americans out of this population because they think they're, you know, less evolved, right? You believe in evolution. That's what they're teaching your kids over there at Yuba City High School. Today, more black babies are aborted than are born alive in New York City. I want you to think about that. More black babies you think, oh, blacks are killing blacks. The, actually, it's not that dangerous. It's more dangerous in the womb of a black woman than it is on the streets of Chicago. I'm going to call it. Is that it? Are we out of time? What's that? Are we, are we out of time? Oh, we got two minutes. We, we're good. Okay. I'll keep going. I got a lot of stuff to do. So it, it's actually, if you're in a black housing project in New York, that is not as dangerous dangerous or Chicago that is not as dangerous as in the womb of a black woman. That's what statistics show you. So when you hear about, Oh, you know, we need to take guns away. That's going to save a lot of lives. No, really what we need to do is take the scalpel away and we need to take the saline solution away and we need to take the scissors away and, the, and all those contraptions, they grab those babies and chop them up. Right. <clears throat> with over a 40% with just over a, with just a 40% survival rate for blacks, the womb of the African American woman is the, the most dangerous spot on earth. Yet Planned Parenthood will somehow like, did you, they sent out a tweet that they are continuing on with the vision of Martin Luther King. You know something? These people have actually lost their mind. Unbelievable. Lost their ever-living mind. And lit and Democrats. Oh, okay. It's over. See you next week.